Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria 3, where we are currently a little bit negative in our bureaucracy. Now we just finished our very expensive war against the Ottoman Empire and Ukraine, and we built up a lot of debt during that time. Our interest is only 12.2k, which is not all that much, so I'm not too concerned about the interest, although paying it down will be good, and that is of course the reason why we took war reparations from both Ukraine and the Ottoman Empire. So that's absolutely great, but we are currently negative in our bureaucracy, which is contributing to some tax waste here. So to that end, we know that we don't want to increase our government administration in perm because this is very slowly increasing its employment. So instead, we're going to do in Tver. And that is absolutely fine. I took a look at this. There's a lot of job seekers here. We've only got one level of government administration here right now. So that'll do absolutely fine for the moment. Now we're going to get finished with our arms industries, our munitions plant, eventually. Why is this minus construction efficiency? State region devastation. Okay, that'll go away, but that's fine. So we're gonna get all of this finished. I already went in and checked to see if these require incorporation. They don't. They're already fully incorporated. So Uzbekia is our only state at this point that is still working on incorporation, and that's going to be done in seven months here. So that is absolutely fantastic. We're really, really happy about that. Did we drop our violent suppression? Yes, we did. We can probably drop our road maintenance in Moscow at this point if we wanted to put this authority into something like a consumption tax to help us pay off this debt a little bit faster. Tobacco would not be a terrible idea. So we'll get that going for right now. That seems like a good way to go. I do want to check in on Moscow now. Uh, what's our market access going to look like here? Okay, so we're going to need a railway in Moscow. That's not... Wait, we're at plus 10? No. This is minus 10. That just needs to update. Okay, we need to get constructing a railway in Moscow then. So we'll get that going. I think that I'm going to drop down our arms industry to let this, the construction efficiency get fixed here. So we'll just drop this down to below this coal mine. By the time we get here in the list, we should be pretty much uh, good to go on that front. It's only 3.7%. So it's not a hugely significant thing there. Okay, so we have some transportation shortages. We know this. We also appear to have inherited a second fleet here. What I'm going to do is I'm still concerned about the workforce in cars overall. So I'm going to say we don't want to have any naval bases here in cars. So I'm going to go to this fleet and we're going to get rid of both of these and tell them, no, get out of here. We don't want the second Russian fleet for the moment. And I do not want that eating up some of our valuable jobs in this area. They're valuable, of course, because of our barracks. We need a lot of job seekers in our barracks. And how much do we actually have here? Not all that much. So we don't want to build additional things in cars if we can at all help it. Let's kick forward for the time being. And that's absolutely fine for now. This location is isolated. That's interesting. We do have ports there. Why would this be isolated? Using one of 20 infrastructure, it does have a fair amount of devastation. And its turmoil is pretty high right now. It is a split state, and we would like to do something about that. So... Why is this region isolated? We definitely do have a port here. This or other port buildings connect it to the Russian market. So I'm guessing that this was just... Uh, this will probably update after a little while. It might be being blockaded or something, but we're not at war. And I don't think anyone's currently embargoing us. Convoy rating has recently sunk 35 of the convoys passing through this node, reducing shipping lane efficiency by an average of 1,774.35%. We currently estimate it will take us 25 days to fully replace the lost convoys. Okay, so this is due to the war with the Ottoman Empire, I'm pretty sure. That should go away. 
yeah, that's improving. I don't expect that to be a significant problem. Okay, now we could start to think about passing, pe or rather, professional army. I was going to say peasant levies. We already have that. We could think about passing professional army. If we did this, this would bring the gentry assembly from 1 to minus 4. Now, the gentry assembly will continue to improve over time. They're still angry about their failed petition, minus 9.36. And if we were to do this, we would have to put the armed forces into government. This would end up resulting in us being at 75, which is still legitimate. And that seems okay. Let's do that. And let's start this. Now, this is not going to radicalize the landed gentry. So that seems very good. I, or I guess gentry assembly. So that seems excellent. They're going to be a little upset, to be sure. We've got an 18%, 19% chance of failure here, a 40% chance of debate, and a 40.8% chance of stall. So this may or may not happen. The Gentry Assembly could win this. We'll see. Taking a look down over here. Yeah, this is now eight of the convoys. That's a ridiculous shipping lane efficiency reduction. Seven convoys. And they're now estimating more days to fully replace it. I think we can safely ignore that. <laughs> Still seven convoys. It'll get there eventually. This is just due to not having naval control over this re region, right? That's reasonably expected. Down to three convoys. Looking better. Two convoys. Eventually. Still two convoys, but it's now 80%, and that's looking great. This is now no longer considered an isolated region, and the standard of living here should start to rise, which would be good. Now, we're on very high taxes right now, and I would like to change that. We are getting our railway and government administration done, and we're, we're at reputable infamy at this point, so that is absolutely fine. We may want to start thinking about, like, attacking China. Oh... 17,368 for army power projection? Look at those numbers of battalions. Is China ridiculously strong now? They're an unrecognized major power. That is ridiculous. I'm kind of wondering what's going on with that. They have the number one GDP worldwide at 151 million. Okay, so we're not going to mess with China. That's pretty clear. Not anytime soon. <laughs> we need additional work for that. Yikes. That's definitely interesting. So we had a stall here, and we could definitely derive some benefit out of it by taking a setback. That's okay, but it is going to reduce our bureaucracy, which is, of course, not ideal. We did just finish up construction on one of those government administrations in Tver. We should probably work on another one, but I think not in Tver. So that'll end up being in, like, Samara. I'm wondering what the current government administration status there is. Yeah, this, this should be fine. We'll get that going, and we'll just continue to boost our bureaucracy that way. Fractional distillation has been unlocked, and that gives us patent stills for our food industries, which is absolutely great. Let's hop over here and go to patent stills. Yes, I know that that's low productivity. What production does that require? Or consumption, rather. Glass? Okay, so we should definitely get a glassworks going here. And that is fine. We'll build this in Ingria. So we'll get that glassworks underway. Market access in Moscow is at 91%. That's expected. We're building our railway there. And we'll see when that uh, enact racial segregation, huh? What are we on right now for our racial laws? Uh, let's see here. That's out over here, I think. No. Where is that? I'm apparently blind. I believe it's under citizenship. Yes. So we're on national supremacy for the moment, and this is a movement to enact racial segregation, which 
I don't know that that would be a particularly horrible thing, but we would lose some authority, which wouldn't necessarily be ideal. So our debt has been paying down pretty quickly here. We're down to minus 10.1k for interest, so that's gone from 12k to 10k. Not bad. Not bad at all. We do want to pay off our debt from that war. That was an expensive war, and that it was reasonably expected that that would be an expensive war, too. So that's fine. Our transportation shortages do need to get dealt with, and we'll get there. We are definitely making our way through these constructions. Glass works in 14 weeks, government administration in five, railway in two, and then we'll be working on the coal mines and these arms industries, and then working on the railways again. Debate failure here. That's unfortunate. Was there an event that I missed over here? There might have been. Or we might have just rolled a failure. But that is definitely very unfortunate. However, our success chance continues to increase. So that is good. I mean, not increasing over the 21% that it was. But what I'm meaning by that is the armed forces are increasing their clout. And that is a good thing for us, for sure. So the glassworks, coal mines, and arms industries are being worked on. And we do have that bureaucracy malice right now. I think we would be positive without that. So that's probably okay on the bureaucracy front for the moment. I want to finish up some of these economic constructions as soon as possible. We're not actually running an Impica's shortage of glass, which kind of surprises me. I think that our glass is maxed out in its uh, market price, right? No, it's a minus seven. Okay, so we were able to absorb that reasonably well. Good to know. Interventionism? Okay. Well, he hasn't started that movement yet, so that's okay. I do want to check in on our literacy. It's creeping upwards, but it's very slow at this rate. Infertile grounds. Okay, interest group hop attraction. Interest group approval for the armed forces. Hmm. 3,900 government expenses for five years. We're just going to take the interest group pop attraction. That will increase their political clout, which would be a good thing. We would be happy with that. So 4.6% chance of advance. The stall chance has actually dropped on this. That is really good. Absolutely fantastic, in fact. Now we had a lot of bait success, and that boosts us back up to that 21%. Okay, looks solid. That does not, of course, come out of the stall chance, but it does come out of the debate chance. I'm okay with that. So far, this professional army is going okay. It's not phenomenal. Our arms industries are going to be finished up in 14 weeks here. And that's all looking good. How are we doing on our next technology? 12 months on that? Sure, that seems fine. And our infamy is still ticking down here. We're at 19.7. I want to try Lithuania and Belarus again soon. The question is... Oh, pr they're, they're a protectorate of the French Empire. Okay, that's maybe not going to be a thing. <laughs> However... In Europa, we would be able to fight Lithuania without fighting France by fighting Belarus here with that defensive pact. I don't know if that works in Victoria. We might have to test that. They also, Belarus, just got a defensive pact with Ukraine. And that's not shocking. These guys are scared of us. With good reason. They have very good reason for that. What technology did we just get? I didn't actually look at that. Can we see in here our recent technologies? Apparently not. Okay, we should check our production methods just in case. I don't know if we got one or not. Uh, let's check through here. That's transportation. I'm not concerned about that right now. Nothing new in here. Nothing new in here. Okay. I wish I knew what tech that was. I should have looked at it, but I absolutely did not. So that's okay. Hopefully we get professional army passed. That would be fantastic. What I'd really like to see is this going up to at least a 50% success chance before we go up into adoption. But we'll see. So we're currently making about 40k. We increased our inv our law enforcement investment. That's looking good. So we're no longer eating up our bureaucracy gains in our institutions. Fantastic there. 
Dissenters have broken ranks, and a stall here is not great. We'll take a setback, and that does boost up our success chance. Okay. Large amounts of Latvian people have begun migrating from our country to Ontario, which is not ideal. But it doesn't seem to actually have a huge effect on our population, so that's good to know. Oh, hello. So, China is currently being occupied heavily by Great Britain. That's very interesting, because they apparently have an army power projection of 1,700. And Great Britain has an po army power projection of 9,000. Given those numbers, I have to assume there's something wrong with the calculation for China. Because Britain is kind of crushing them. Yeah, there has to be something wrong with it. Up to 18,504? I feel like they're not actually as strong as this is saying. We can actually see here. 18 offense, 18 defense. Those are really weak armies. We have 34 offense and 38 defense. Yet, that army... Actually, let's go with one that's broadly similar to ours. Plain Blue Banner. 1,333, right? So, Plain Blue Banner, that has 19 offense, 19 defense. Okay, and 70 battalions, so it's similar in size. Then if we compare that to our army, the second Russian army is 2,448. So, it's sheer numbers is how, is how China is getting that. With their 654 battalions, but 0% mobilized, and they're fighting this exclusively with conscripts. I suspect they can't afford to mobilize these armies. That's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Now, we're negative in our authority right now, and minus 200 from suppressing the intelligentsia. That, that'll happen. That's reasonably fine. I'm not too concerned about that right now. All that's really getting us is radicalism and opposition group, interest group approval. So that's okay for now. We'll see what happens with professional army, but this is definitely telling me that China's army is a paper tiger. On paper, it's terrifying. But in reality, Britain doesn't appear to be scared of it. And that's good to know. That is definitely good to know. We are now approximately at our peak GDP, and that's continuing to go up. We are working on these railways at this time. I want to check in. We have a dye shortage. Okay, can we do anything about that? We can't make artificial dyes yet. We don't have the technology for that. Do we have any dye plantations that we can do? No. No. Okay, so there's just nothing we can do about this other than importing dyes. We'll import them from China. Fantastic. Okay, so our law is passed into consideration. That's fine. I think that we probably... Well, this may or may not happen still. I think it's more likely that it happens than not. But we'll see. So how are we doing with our dyes with that import route? Looks good. We've got the dye situation under control. That is absolutely excellent. We're working on constructing our primary rail network at this point, and that is still a reasonably high priority, getting the rail network constructed. However, some of these have negative construction efficiency due to most of them, I think it's going to be terrain, Siberian terrain. So that's not going to change based on when we construct it. Things like this, though, the turmoil will change. So I think we should probably construct the areas with the higher construction efficiency first. So we're just going to go through something like this and any of these that have reduced construction efficiency, we're going to construct later. However, this is an exception because we already have it underway. So we'll do something like that. 
Some of these are going to be reduced due to turmoil. Some of them are going to be reduced due to terrain. And so the ones with terrain, it doesn't matter when we build it. But the ones with turmoil, that might get better later. Or it might get worse, but I suspect it'll get, well, radicalism is uh, going a bit nuts, particularly down here. Well, particularly in the areas we've conquered, which isn't necessarily surprising given our national supremacy stance. This guy has been sent into exile by the French Empire. Okay. So would racial segregation help us in this situation? Cultures will be accepted based on shares a heritage cultural trait with any primary cultures in their country. So if we look at our cultures here, we can see that things like the Swedish culture is currently discriminated in Russia. So this is currently discriminated in Russia due to national supremacy, I believe. So if we go into our laws here and we look at national supremacy, cultures will be accepted based on shares a heritage culture trait with any primary cultures in their country or shares a cultural trait which is not a heritage cultural trait with any primary cultures. So national supremacy is more open in terms of which cultures are accepted than racial segregation would be. So that is good to know. That will mean that these areas that are currently high unrest are going to get worse under racial segregation. So that's reasonably fine, unless we were able to find some way to um, displace them from the territory as a cultural group, which, you know, is, a, is just a fantastic thing to do. No one will have any problems with that. <laughs> it's literally the uh, definition of genocide. But we could theoretically do that. But we're not going to, I don't think. I would prefer to make our way towards multiculturalism. Generally, in Victoria, you're better off going for, like, democracy and multiculturalism because that's just the way that the world was going at this time. I don't know if we'll actually go for a full-on democracy here. Probably not. Bureaucratic imbroglio? Oh, okay. That's not ideal. We rolled up another stall there. That's very not ideal. Okay, so China just lost to Britain, and they're down to 9,000 power projection. So, like I said, I think that they're a paper tiger. I think that they don't actually have a way to do that. Which means that, hypothetically, we may be able to get some sort of a diplomatic play targeting them. We currently have none available due to... Oh, they're genial and friendly. Okay, that's fine. We don't have an interest in North China either. So, do we have any available interests? Uh, let's see here. Diplomatic lens, declare interests. We do. We could declare five interests here. We have a declared interest in Poland. I think for the moment... Or no, we don't. We should add a declared interest in Poland. For sure. We could certainly consider adding an interest in Anatolia, in Persia, in Himalayas, and in Manchuria. Something like that. We don't have an interest in North China right now. That's due to a lack of declared interests. We could remove some of these declared interests out over this way that currently exist, but I think for the moment this is reasonably fine. Now, what about Norway? They're in a personal union under Sweden. That's fascinating. They're not a subject of Russia. Are they? Hang on. Norway is not a subject of Russia. So Norway is a subject of Russia because they're in a personal union under Sweden who is a subject under us. Fascinating. That is absolutely fascinating. I didn't realize we controlled all of Scandinavia. That's good to know. 
So then what about Denmark? We could potentially go after Denmark. 18.3 infamy? That would not be all that much. Uh, who's Denmark friends with? They're in the British Customs Union. And they have a, a personal union with Schleswig and with Holstein. Fascinating. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we'll make any decisions about going to war. We may wait until Professional Army either passes or fails. That would probably be for the best, ultimately. Probably. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.